Hello. So in this video, I will introduce the Lilly family or Lilly ACE to you. Uh, it is one of several or, well, more than several monocot families that we'll study in this class. Uh, so we will look at the Iris family or Iridaceae. We'll also look at the Onion family or Aliaceae and the Brodea family or Themidaceae. But in this video, we'll talk about the Liliaceae and we may also get a, one or two more monocot families covered in this class. So plants in the lily family are herbs, okay? So they're not woody and they are perennials. So they live many years. Um, and because they're not woody, they die ba back every year. So if their winter comes, you know, they're not gonna be growing through snow if they're up in the mountains. So they die back every year and they have to store their food somewhere and this would be in an underground storage organ. Woody plants don't need to do that. They can store their food up above, but you know these have to use their food the next year to grow the plant again and make flowers. So there are many different types of underground storage organs, and I'm gonna introduce two of them to you here, um, bulbs and rhizomes. That's what we find in the lily family. So let's start with bulbs. Think of an onion bulb. Onions are not in the lily family, they're in a different family, the onion family, but we're familiar with them. And so you have a little bit of stem at the very base, you may have some papery leaves over the sides, but what makes this a bulb, it's underground, it's more or less vertically oriented, and the food is stored in these fleshy leaves. So the onion scales are fleshy leaves, and that's where the food is stored. Be aware that not everything that is sold as a bulb in grocery stores or plant stores is truly a bulb, okay? You have to have the food stored in the fleshy leaves. All right, so we can have bulbs. We can also have rhizomes, okay? Now, this, what's pictured is ginger, which is not in the lily family, but it's a good picture of ginger, and most of you are familiar with that. Rhizomes are underground stems. They grow more or less horizontally, so they can be used to spread spread out, uh, reproduce asexually for a plant, they can also store the food. A lot of grasses are rhizomatous, um, but they may or may not be storing a lot of food. But here in something like this ginger, you can see it's pretty fleshy looking, all right? And what'll happen is uh, it'll send up shoots above ground and it'll have roots develop. But this is what you normally buy in the store. And you can tell it's a stem because you have these circular nodes. Now, we're used to thinking of nodes as just single points where the leaves attach. But if you think of a corn plant, corn being a monocot, the leaf base wraps all the way around the stem. So you do have a circular node and that's what we're seeing right here and here. And of course the stem is branching also. So rhizomes, horizontal underground stems, can store a lot of food also. And so lily family plants, perennial herbs from bulbs or rhizomes. And so why is this important? You know, like, why are we going under these underground storage organs? First of all, don't dig them up, okay? Unless it's in your yard, don't dig them up. It's very much discouraged to try and use this for identification. But in terms of, you know, you, uh, distinguishing between families, we can use these, um, these underground storage organs. Because like I said, some of the other families that are similar in many ways have different kinds of underground storage organs. And yes, um, in some cases, if you're really seriously trying to identify a plant, you might have to dig up the underground storage organ, but replant it. Native Americans, of course, used a lot of these for food, and they would replant the little bulblets, little offshoots and things like that to make sure that the plants were there for future generations. So be very careful if you're going after the underground storage organs. I would discourage it. All right, now let's take a look at the leaves. Um, the leaves may be basal, that is at the base of the stem, or colline, arranged up higher on the stem. And there can be various arrangements. So none of these species or genera do you need to know yet, unless I say otherwise in class, but just assume I'm using these as pictures for illustration, illustrating these various um, characteristics. So for instance, um, this calicordus has a single basal leaf, 
All right, there's a couple plants next to each other. That's why it looks like two. Um, we can have over here, this calicordus has colline leaves. So they're up higher on the stem. And um, like I said, it can be various arrangements. This particular lily actually has whorls of leaves on the stem, somewhere like four, six, seven whorls of leaves on there. So leaf arrangement can vary quite a lot. Also inflorescences, and I'm not even going to um, talk about the inflorescence uh, various types because when there's a lot of types, I don't really want you to memorize them all because it's just too much information. All right, here's a non-native lily, but it is in the genus Lilium. It's in the lily family. We uh, worked on these before. If we get to the flowers, of course, you have radial symmetry. And there's generally six perianth parts in two whorls. Now, if I haven't used the term perianth yet, or if you forgot and I used it, um, perianth refers to both sepals and petals, all right? So since the sepals and petals often look very similar in, in these plants, instead of calling them sepals and petals, I'll just say there's six perianth parts in two whorls of three. Um, another term, which I tend to not use a lot, is sometimes people call them tepals, T-E-P-A-L-S, because they're so similar. But we can just say perianth, six perianth uh, parts in whorls of three. And of course, there, is, there are some minor differences usually. In this case, the, the narrowness of the sepals versus the petals, but they tend to be quite showy oftentimes, both of them. And then getting to the stamens, all right, we looked at this before with the, the lily. You can have, you generally do have six stamens, okay? There's one genus that has three, so six or three, usually six. And you can have the anthers attached to the filament like this, where the filament's sort of in the middle of the anther, so it's sort of like a teeter-totter, okay? This is not that usual for the family, but you can have that. More usually, you would have the filament attached right at the base of the anther, and it wouldn't be able to move around. <clears throat> we do have a superior ovary in this family, always. And we have one style, but in some cases it's, oh, sorry, my mouse is so sensitive these days. One style like this, it's a new, new mouse with the computer, um, but it may be um, branched or three lobed. It's not in this picture. So we have one style and um, the stigma here and the pistil is made of three fused carpels. Okay, now here's a uh, native uh, lily family member, and I want to talk about, I wanted to just show th this one has a relatively unbranched style, even though it's very fuzzy picture, sorry about that. And then here, this is lovely um, uh, fritillaria. Don't need to know any species yet, right? Okay, um, note the three lobed branched or branch style. So this is one of the lobes or branches. There's another one and there's another one, but they join together. And so you have a style, a single unbranched style below that. All right, and this one is pretty cool because you have a very short style. That's actually considered the style there. And these are three stigmas on top of the style that are going off in different directions. All right, I don't know, I'll put this in, it's just pretty. <laughs> okay, so just so you get an idea of plants in the lily family. Now let's talk about the fruits, okay? Fruits are berries or capsules. Now I don't know any pictures of the berries in the family, but we all know what berries are. Here's a nice capsule here for this um, gold nugget. Here's the flowers. And you can see it's starting to open up to release the seeds. Well, I hope you enjoyed this romp through the lily family. We will be learning genera and species uh, a little bit later, but I figured pictures might help you get a sense for what we're talking about, the characteristics of the family. And let's take care. Let me shut this down here if I can do this.